Hi there, my name is Professor Kevin McGuigan and we're going to look at the physics of respiration. Hopefully by the end of this lecture you'll understand the meaning and relevance of Boyle's Law, how and where that operates within the respiratory system and see how Boyle's Law in conjunction with Laplace's Law determines the way in which air is pulled into the lungs and then expelled. So there's Robert Boyle, famous Irish physicist, and he gives his name to probably the most important uh, gas law, which is Boyle's Law. And that says, for a fixed mass of enclosed gas, and the word enclosed is very important, the product of the pressure and the volume remains constant. So P by V equals a constant, or P1 V2, P1 V1 equals P2 V2. Now, don't get too upset about the constant. Uh, it, it varies from system to system. All you need to know is that if the volume increases, Boyle's Law says the pressure will decrease. Alternatively, if the volume decreases, then the pressure will increase to keep this value mathematically constant. So here we have an enclosed volume of gas in a piston and we can see as the piston goes up and down the pressure increases as the pressure increases the volume decreases Laplace's law on the other hand isn't a gas law instead it determines the relationship between the tension and radius for a membrane under tension so the membrane, membrane that's under tension, in our case, will be the alveoli. And Laplace's law says that the difference in pressure, delta P, is equal to twice the tension divided by the radius. For our situation within the lungs, the pressure on the outside will be the pressure in the pleural space, and the pressure on the inside will be the pressure within the alveoli, which for reasons uh, which will remain unknown to us, that's usually referred to as the pulmonary pressure. So here's our, uh, an example you can try at home. Get yourself a set of rubber gloves and inflate the glove and then tie it at the bottom. The gas space on the inside, in the palm area and in the fingers, they are all at the same value. The membrane has the same thickness and the outer atmosphere has the same value all around. So from that perspective, the delta P would be the same. But the thing that is different here is at the palm, you have a large radius and that will give you a high tension. Whereas in the fingers, you've got a much smaller radius. So the membrane tension will be much lower. So you'll find the, the fingers are quite floppy. In fact, this area is under much higher tension than the finger area. So now we're going to see how Boyle's Law and Laplace's Law combine to get the air in and out of the alveoli. So here we have our respiratory system. We have the trachea which breaks into the bronchus and then the, the bronchii and the, ultimately the alveoli and we want to get the air drawn into this system. We can treat each lung as being contained in its own separate evacuated space. The, the space between the outer surface of the lung and the inner surface of the thoracic cavity is at a lower than atmospheric pressure. So it's a slight vacuum. So each lung is inflated within this space. Now during inspiration, when you breathe in, we'll see why this happens in a moment, but if you breathe in, the pressure in the outer space here, the lighter blue area, will drop. That means the pleural pressure drops. Consequently, if P outer reduces, you're subtracting a smaller number from the P inner. So this term will increase. And for that reason, this term also increases. So your delta P term has increased. We know when we breathe in that your chest volume gets bigger. So 
you know that the radius increases. So if you've got an increase in this, the only way that Laplace's law can remain valid is if you get a much bigger increase in the tension. So it's for that reason that the alveolar tension increases during inspiration. So here we have a, uh, an animation of the respiratory system and now we can see how the pressure in the pleural cavity is varied. This region down here, this membrane is the diaphragm and this muscular diaphragm controls the volume within which the lungs are held. So when you breathe in the diaphragm moves down this increases the volume in the pleural space. It's very important to realize that Boyle's law does not operate within the alveolus because it's not an enclosed gas. The air in the alveolus has a direct path all the way to the outside. It's not an enclosed gas. The enclosed space is the pleural space and this is where Boyle's law is in operation. When the diaphragm goes down, the volume increases, the pressure drops, and that allows the atmospheric pressure to inflate the lungs to a larger volume. And that, it's as simple as that. It, furthermore, when the air is drawn in, it doesn't get drawn in to the, all the way to the end. It only gets sucked into a certain distance, and then you rely on diffusion to get the oxygen the rest of the way into the alveolus. So that's the end of our, our, our little examination of res the respiratory system and hopefully you'll now understand why Boyle's law operates within the pleural space and not within the, the alveoli and how Boyle's law and Laplace's law combine to give you the, the respiratory uh, process. Thank you very much. Goodbye.